Well, I want to talk this morning about a new heart and a new spirit. It's a good since this morning we've been hearing in the song, even in the prayer this morning, that God is something new for us. We started this year by saying that you've got another chance to succeed. And then I spoke about a new season. And then I spoke about Psalm 23, that is back to basics. I also spoke about the four types of soil where we sow our seed and what it represents in the hearts. And then this week, I want to talk to you about a new heart and a new spirit. God is busy doing something this year in Fountain of Life Church to our people. Colleen, I can't wait for Chris to come out and to testify. You think he will? We, we're going to encourage him. God has done such a miracle for Chris, but uh, just, just know that God is moving. I, I can't wait for Chris to come and, and uh, testify of God's greatness. But I want to come back to a new heart and a new spirit. What does that mean? If you have your Bible with you this morning, just turn to Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 26 and 27. I thought this morning that I'll come with a white uh, jacket and do you call it a stethoscope? You know, I wanted to dress like a doctor because today we're going to do some surgery in your hearts. And then the Lord says, no man, it's not you doing the surgery, it's I. So I said, okay, I'll just, I'll just dress like I am. I want to say to you this morning that God is ready to operate on your heart. But for him to operate, you need to invite him into your heart. This message is not just for the unbeliever. But this scripture was actually prophesied over God's people, not the unbeliever, the God's people. So let's read. I will, not Ezekiel, this is God. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Have your hearts become soft since the last preaching that I gave? If so, I thank God. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to, and, and move you to follow my degrees and be careful to keep my laws. If God puts his spirit inside of us, it comes with a function that needs to happen with that. So, let's start this morning and let me see if I can explain this to you this morning. I want you guys to know that your heart is very important. Without your heart, your body cannot function. Let me see if I got my phone with me. I took a picture Do you know that your heart, whoops, I want to tell you how important your heart is. This is your physical heart. It's not the inner man heart, it's the physical heart. The heart is a cone-shaped muscular pump. The heart beats about two and a half billion times in the average lifetime. That's quite a lot of beats. In that two and a half billion beats, it never misses a beat. Look how great God has made us. Doug, you've got about one and a half billion, maybe still left, I'm not sure, uh, but it's a long time still. They say that your heart is about as big as a fist, as your fist. I've got a big heart. 
And I was thinking about that. Do you know that God, the Word of God says that God holds the whole world in His hand. Think about when He makes a fist, how big His fist is. That will give you kind of an indication how big God's heart is. There's space for everyone on earth in His heart. Do you know that your heart pumps your, your left side of the heart. I want to now start um, sound clever. The left side of your heart pumps blood through an estimated 120,000 kilometer of vessels and veins, which is equivalent to traveling around the earth equator about three times all in this body. That is how important the heart is. Then the right side of the heart pumps blood through the lungs, enabling the blood to pick up oxygen and to unload carbon dioxide. This means that the heart pumps more than 14,000 liters of blood a day. 14,000 liters of blood a day. And that makes, I think, 1.5, no, sorry, 5 million liters of blood a year. Imagine if our hearts can do that. What can our inner heart do when God pumps in his Holy Spirit into us? I can see the picture of the blood where it's going in and then cleanses and go out. I see God's Spirit going into our spiritual hearts and going out new life. It takes out all the, uh, it gives oxygen and takes out the other one. Carbon, yeah, that one. So, who will give us a new heart? God will give us a new heart. No one else can do surgery on our spiritual heart than Jesus Christ. He has died for our sins. And because of that, we have the best physician ever. And I'm so glad to be part of him. Why the heart? Well, I think... A lot of people would say, if you say, what is the heart all about? You'll say it's about love. It's about emotions. It's about compassion. The word heart can mean different things depending upon the context. Many people associate the heart purely with feelings and emotions. But I want to say this morning that God is going to operate on you this morning. When we think of the heart, we think of, um, no, sorry, the heart includes our feelings, but it's much more. The heart is in the middle of our body. Without the heart, our body cannot function. Without God's heart in us, spiritual heart, we cannot function. Without His Spirit, we cannot function. So I want to say this morning to you, even if you are a believer and you have gone astray a little bit, God's going to operate on your heart this morning. And He's going to bring you back. What does that mean? Well, the Bible of, often speaks of the heart. Did you know that? I'm going to show you a few scriptures, and then we're going to go further. The first one is the heart is the inner man. This we find in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 16. Then uh, the most we find out about the heart is in Proverbs. So I'm going to take you to a few scriptures in Proverbs. Proverbs 4 verse 23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Everything you do flows from your heart. Another translation says, Keep your heart with all diligence, 
for out of it springs the issues of life. I want you to start realizing there's more towards your heart than what you think. I'm talking about the inner man, your heart, spiritual heart. Proverbs 16 verse 9 says, A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. So know that even though your heart determines certain things, the Lord still determines your steps. Proverbs 23 verse 7, and just a part of it says, As a person thinks in their heart, that is who they really are. My goodness. As a person thinks in his heart, when you say bad things, when you have bad attitude, when you have a lot of negativity, it means your heart is full of that. But if you have God's heart in you, you will be overflowing with joy. There will be peace in your life. So if you are not experiencing joy, if you are not experiencing peace, we have to examine our hearts to find out where we are. Proverbs 27 and verse 19. As the waters reflect the face, so one's life reflects the heart. What does your heart reflect this morning? When you come to Christ, God gave you a new heart. He didn't repair the old heart. God is not a mechanic. He does not repair. He replaces. Um, a lot of times I think about the stories. I don't have family that had that, but stories I hear about people having a transplant, a heart transplant. If you look at them before that heart transplant, they are so weak. They've got no energy. You can say there's even no joy inside of them. And then all of a sudden there comes a heart and they have an operation and they put a new heart into him. And all of a sudden that man or woman has got so much strength, they start climbing mountains, they start jogging, they, they, they start enjoying life all of a sudden. Why? Because that old heart was not fixed. And of course, uh, doctors, you can fix an uh, old heart. But I'm talking about the spiritual heart now. You can do so much more when God replaces that heart inside of you, that broken heart, with a heart that is whole. He filled this new heart with the Holy Spirit. As soon as you give your life to God, the Holy Spirit gets activated. And immediately you have a new spirit. But we'll get to that. I want to say this morning that the desire of your heart will govern the direction of your life. Make sure that you're on the right direction. But that's only when God governs your heart. Everything in your life begins in your heart. Remember, I'm not talking about your physical heart now. I'm talking about your spiritual heart. In Matthew 12, verse 4, we see that Jesus said, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Once again, we hear that. What are you talking about when you speak? That would involve your thoughts, your attitudes, and actions. That all begins from your heart. So I want to ask you this morning, do you have a heart that is troubled? Do you have a heart with problems this morning? Well, if God is not part of you, yes, you have. Make God part of your life. Ignoring the voice of the Lord can make your heart cold, hard, and insensitive to God. Disobedience, bitterness, and unforgiveness can all cause spiritual heart trouble. That's why I want you to have a look at your heart closely this morning. 
Because afterwards we're going to pray and God's going to give you a new heart and a new spirit. I'm going to concentrate a lot on the heart this morning because that's the most important thing. I mean, God is the most important thing. But in our body, we can, they can chop my arm off and I can still survive. But they can't take my heart out and still survive. If your heart has grown cold and insensitive to the voice of the Lord, God wants to revive and refresh your heart. I know that most of Fountain of Life hearts are healthy. Because look at how we worship on the Sunday morning. But there's some of us going through some challenges. And do not let your heart become troubled. Let's give over to God this morning. When your heart grows cold, the things of the Lord no longer excite you as they once did. Are you still excited to come to church on a Sunday? Are you still excited to read the Word of God? Are you excited to go minister the Word of God out there to other people? Just like your physical heart, you must take good care of your spiritual heart. How do we take care of our spiritual heart? By constantly feeding it with the Word of God. The Word of God is our medicine. In Luke chapter 6 verse 45, it says, A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. What are you storing up in your heart? But also it says that evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored in his heart. For the mouth, for the mouth speaks what the heart is full. I want us to start listening to what we say when we talk to one another. Rather speak life into the person next to you than agree about how bad South Africa is or how bad your job is. Speak life, because that which your heart is full of, that you will speak. And I've, I've experienced this in the past, where I've spoken very bad about this country. Because that was most probably what my heart was full of. But since God has operated my heart and put a new spirit inside of me, I see only the good and not the bad. With the grace of God on my life. The heart is where our decisions are made. And so the condition of our heart is extremely important. What gives us a bad heart or a troubled heart? Well, there's peer pressure. We have to be better than those around us. Other people draw us in and we get caught in peer pressure. There's money. We know the Bible talks a lot about that. Even your loved ones can give you heart trouble. Comfort. I'm so comfortable where I live, what I have, that you forget about God. That brings you heart trouble. And sometimes we think we are our own God. So let us not get to this point. Our challenge is to get our heart clean and ready for God to operate on. So, how can we receive a new heart in what and what is a new heart? So, I, keep, I put the picture on here. For this one, I could have put a white coat on. So, I'm going to teach you this morning that this side top, right atrium, if we look at God operating in our heart, our heart's got four chambers in it. So the Lord's going to give four hearts to you this morning. The first one is a humble heart. That's the first chamber. So the blood will flow through your heart, and the first thing it will catch is a humble chamber. We need to be humbled. We need to be humble in God's sight. And so, 
on the left atrium, because there's atriums and ventricle. <laughs> Am I sounding clever this morning? That's good. Is a believing heart. The humble heart this morning, let me give you a scripture for that. The sacrifices of God are broken, are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. And that's in Psalm 51, verse 17. A believing heart, we read in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 and 10. It says, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, God's going to give you a heart where you believe in God, that God has risen him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. So, to believe in your heart means to believe apart from your mind and your body. You believe in your heart. Don't take it to your mind. To believe in your heart means to live in accordance with. If you really believe that God's, God raised Jesus from the dead, then you will live in accordance with who you are in Christ. To believe in your heart means to act on God's word. That is what it means to believe. But then if we go to the right ventricle, we find a, a loving heart. In 1 Peter 1 verse 8, it says, Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you, don't, you do not see him now, you believe in him, and you are filled with the inexpressible and glorious joy. If you have love in your heart, you will be filled with joy. And then the last chamber of the heart is an obedient heart. What does that mean? In Ezekiel 36, we've read it. And I will give you a new heart. I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my degrees and be careful to keep my laws. An obedient heart is not a burden, but a source of joy. But what about our conduct in everyday affairs? Perhaps, perhaps in seemingly small matters. Jesus stated in Luke chapter 16 and verse 10. He says, the person faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And the person unrighteous in what is least is unrighteous also in much. Each of us would therefore do well to ask ourselves, do I have an obedient heart when it comes to the mirror things or matters that others do not even know about. An obedient heart will result in much joy and much blessing. If we have those four things in our heart, the end result is joy. So what does this mean? Well, the power of the Holy Spirit changes our hearts from Sin-focused to God-focused. We become God-focused. However, when Jesus died on the cross, he broke the power of sin that controls us. Romans 6 verse 10. Receiving him as our Savior gives us access to God and his power. It all starts in our heart. So, Knowing what our heart needs, the new heart that you need, if this is not in your heart, we're going to pray after my preaching, and God's going to release that on your life. That brings us now to the new spirit. So what is the new spirit? Well, 
when God promises us as a new human, uh, when God promises to give us a new human spirit, He is promising to change our motivations, which we bring to our choices and actions. That is our motivations. The purpose of the change in motivation is that we might wholeheartedly obey God, like it says in verse 27. Follow God. But we need something more than just a new human art. What do we need more? Well, in that verse 27, we need the Spirit, which is spelled with a capital S. That is the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit living inside of us so that, and, uh, and if we are going to change and obey God, the Spirit needs to be in our heart also. So remember, it's not just a new heart that you need this morning. It's also a new spirit that you need. Now, when we give our hearts to, to Christ, we get it automatically. In the Old Testament, in Ezekiel, the Spirit always came upon the people, was not inside the people. And so he promised a new spirit to come. And because of Jesus Christ that died on the cross, we have that new spirit, which we call the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18, it says, Do not get drunk with wine, for that is wickedness. But be filled with the Holy Spirit and constantly, and constantly guided by him. So if you want to get drunk, get drunk in the Holy Spirit. That's the best drink to drink. You cannot buy that over the counter. You just ask God for new spirit. And it's not spirits. It is a spirit. How do we get this Holy Spirit? Well, we just ask for it. How do we ask God for things? By praying. Prayer is still one of the most powerful things we can use in our walk with God. A person who is drunk is living under the control of alcohol. So if you drink and you get drunk, alcohol is your boss. But a person who is filled with the Spirit is living under the control of God. I'll much rather be under that control. Well, it just goes to show again that in Ezekiel chapter 36, which we read already, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will put my spirit, that is the Holy Spirit, within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. You see, when we got the Holy Spirit, we are under God's control. So we will walk where God says we have to walk if the spirit operates in us. And so God gives us the Holy Spirit a new breath of life to assist us in a time of need. So the heart pumps the blood, but God gives us the breath of life, which is the Holy Spirit. Like a new heart, the new spirit begins when we become in faith, when we start believing in Jesus Christ. We read in John chapter 20, verse 22, John chapter 20, verse 22, where the disciples saw Jesus for the first time risen from the dead. And what did Jesus do? He breathed over them. I pray this morning that God will breathe His Holy Spirit over you, because when He breathed over them, they received the Holy Spirit. May God breathe over us this morning. The Holy Spirit is constantly moving. The Holy Spirit doesn't stagnate. He is constantly moving. The Holy Spirit is unstoppable in our lives. We cannot stop or bypass the Holy Spirit. It's like asking a fire to burn without heat. It's like having water thrown over you but don't get wet. The Holy Spirit is unstoppable. There's nothing the Holy Spirit cannot do for you. And if we have a new heart and a new spirit, 
it means some new things for us. What new things? Well, then our mind are renewed. We've got new beginnings. Didn't your life change when you gave your life to Jesus? We have new beginnings. We have eternal life that comes with that. I want to say to you this morning that you can change. But allow God to operate on you this morning. We cannot change on our own. Change comes with, from within. The promise given by God through Ezekiel is that we've been given a new heart and a new spirit. And that is God's word written in our hearts and the Holy Spirit placed within them. God's word is in your heart. It says in Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 26, I will take your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. We spoke about that last week when we spoke about the four soils. And I will put my spirit within you. You see how important it is that we cultivate our heart to receive the word of God and to have that which God has given us. And this morning, if there is anyone who hasn't taken that step of faith in asking God to be your salvation, I want you to come to me afterwards so that I can pray with you. For this is your day that the Lord has made, that you will get close and experience him for who he is. In Psalm 51 verse 10, David is a very, very good example of us. Create in me a clean heart. Those are now for us that knows the Lord, not the newly. These are for us. This is for us, knowing the Lord. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. I pray this prayer over you. Remember, this promise isn't for those who have, haven't heard, but for those who have for you sitting in front of me here. I want all of you to pray with me this morning. Will you pray with me? Father, we thank you that you have given us a new heart and that you have given me a new spirit. I pray, Lord, that you will take the old and replace it with your word. I don't want to have a hard heart anymore. But birth in me a new heart, Lord. God, fill my heart with the Holy Spirit so that all things can be new in my life. Through Jesus Christ that saved me and that, re and that restores me. In Jesus' name, amen. God is in the restoration business. Amen. We read in, oh, did I not? Yeah. We read about this new heart that gives us eventually a new mind. And I want to s say to you this morning, because of a new heart and a new spirit, your mind will be active hearing the word of God. Your mind will change. Remember, you do not make decisions in your mind. You make it in your heart. So your heart must first be changed before your mind is changed. So I pray this morning that your mind will be conformed to the word of God. In Romans 12 verse 2, it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. I love that word, renewal. Our mind needs to be renewed. We are able to be transformed because our mind is made new through Christ. Just as your heart is no longer a slave to sin, neither is your mind. 
your intellect, your brain, and your thoughts are all pure because of your heart that has been changed. The Bible speaks to us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. I want you all to stand this morning, please. What does it mean to be a new creation? I want to say this morning to you, God is not just here to touch your heart. He's not just here to give you a new spirit. He's not just here to renew your mind. He's not just here this morning so that you can have new beginnings. He's not just here that you have eternal life. But the Word of God says, He uh, he is a new creation. In Christ, you are a new creation. There's not one organ in your body that is excluded from that verse. That is your whole body. Are you ready this morning to be a new creation in Jesus Christ? It says, the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. I want you guys to, even if you don't do it here, go home and go profess or go declare that over your own life. Say, because of God, not say it now, but when you go home, say that because of Christ, because of my operation that I had, getting a new heart and a new spirit, the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. I want to say to you that I see in every one of you this morning a new creation. I see in every one of you a new creation. That means everything within you. That just, I want to add on by saying that is what I see spiritually. But this morning I also see physically a new creation. So if you are sick this morning, if you need a miracle from Jesus this morning, this is His morning that is going to operate on you and is going to fix your body the way that He has created it. I believe it. As I am standing here, I believe it. I told the class on Thursday evening, I have never ever heard so many testimonies. And yes, there's big ones coming that we might not have seen. But God is working within our people here. In this family, God is moving. And I give all glory and honor and praise to God for what He's doing in our midst, what He's doing in your lives and in my life. I cannot say this morning that God is not alive. He is alive. And I want to say this morning, the old has passed away and the new has come. But Father, I pray that in this new, that you will guide our lives. You will lead us, Father God. Because also, when our mind is renewed, we think more about that which is of you. And when your heart and mind begins to feel like a battlefield, does your heart and mind feel like a battlefield this morning? If so, fill it with the weapon of his word and grab a hold of the victory already given to you by Jesus Christ. God's plan for us is victory in Jesus. I see His victory over us this morning. There is nothing more that I want in my life than God's victory. So if you are here this morning and you feel that God really needs to work in your heart, and in your spirit. I want you just where you are to raise your hands. I want him to work in my life. And I'm going to pray that God will do a miracle in your heart and in your spirit. And I want to say that as he is doing that miracle, I want to say this morning that the old will pass 
and the new has come. So, Father, I thank you for every hand that I see this morning, Lord. Every hand that is raised in this place this morning, Lord. We come and we bring every single person before you this morning. And, Father, we ask you this morning to be the physician that will operate on our hearts this morning, Lord. Let us not be like we were when we walked into this place this morning, Lord. But take that which is hard, the stony and the rocky and the hard heart out of us, Father God. Give us a heart of flesh this morning, Lord, like your word declares unto us, Lord. You are the great healer. You are the great God that changes everything around us. And Father, we open up our souls to you this morning and say, Lord, have your way in our hearts, O Lord. Operate in our hearts this morning. We will not be the same anymore again. But Father, you are going to change us in a way that we will say that the old has passed away. I thank you for a new spirit this morning. Make your spirit known to every single person in this place this morning. No one in this place will walk and not experience your presence, Father God. So we thank you for your Holy Spirit upon our lives, Father God, that you have come and that you are dwelling within us, Father God. Every spiritual need that we have, I thank you, Lord, that you will fulfill that. But also this morning, every physical need that we have, I pray for supernatural healing power to flow over every one of you this morning. It is only our God that can heal you. It is only God that can, uh, that can um, fix that which is wrong inside of you. And Father, you are the creator of our bodies as you are the creator of our hearts. I pray, Lord, for your miracle working power to fall upon every one of them in this place now in Jesus' name. May thy kingdom come. May thy will be done in Fountain of Life Church as it is in heaven, Father God. We thank you for victory in Jesus. We thank you that the battle is not ours anymore, but we thank you, Lord, that the battle has been won on the cross. And we know all we need to do is turn our eyes upon Jesus and all this will fall away as you become greater and greater in our lives.